Hello dear everyone, welcome to Dab Mentors. My name is Darlington Gospel and it's been a while so uh, we got to get back to work. We got to get back to helping you guys transition into Web3 development. Okay, and in this particular series that we're starting while we're still working on other good stuff behind the scene and so on, is we want to compare uh, the top three programming languages that we uh, we think, in our opinion, that would be a great fit for you. Okay, this is like a part one, but we also have other parts as well coming soon. So. Um, one thing you should know is that blockchain is not for the faint heart so if you want to come into this uh, uh, department of development you got to be a tough thick person okay so that you will not be submerged by the challenges that you will face especially in building smart contracts testing you know and the risk of having bugs you know deployed on the main net so you don't want that so that's why we want you to learn as much as you can and gain mastery in this field okay so the top three programming languages that you should know in our opinion is one solidity is our favorite okay and um, we've chosen this because it is simple easy to use and you know it has a wide community of users you know so you, if you have an issue you can easily find pro, uh, the solution online on the internet okay so but what about its limitations you know it's it's not very much scalable especially in the layer one all right so that's why you have so many blockchain uh, layer two built on the ethereum uh, blockchain so and also it's not as secure you know as a rust programming language okay that is a lot more mature than solidity well and also it can be verbose and prone to error so error reporting some sometimes and not at its best so these are some things that you should know about the solidity programming language the top uh, companies that you should know using solidity as their smart contract programming languages include ethereum for sure um, the big guy there, Binance Smart Chain, also another big guy, and then Polygon Network. These three guys are using uh, Solidity and so many other blockchain networks which I can list here. It's just so many. I can't even list all of them. So there are many. I'm going to reserve that. The next one on the line here is Rust Programming Language. The top blockchain company that uses Rust as their smart contract programming language include the popular and widely known Solana. Okay and we have polkadot and we also have um stella stella uses their smart contract framework called sorobam it uses uh rust under the hood about it so these are some things and it's quite important that you should know you know these companies these blockchain networks how wide they are their applicability and all of that so that you can be able to use that to discern the smart contract programming language that you should gain mastery on okay so there are many companies as well that uses uh rust as their programming language for their smart contract okay the cool thing about rust or the advantage is that it has a strength of you know being highly secure and memory safe okay it's high performance and very scalable and you see the programming uh the blockchain companies that uses this the one of the things that they boast of is its scalability the scale scale secure secure scale you know because uh the rust programming language is built with that you know security and scalability mindset under the hood okay so we also have uh it's also growing in community and in adoption you know but you can obviously compare it with solidity you know which is like you know the big guy in the game all right so it has uh some weaknesses it's more difficult to learn compared to uh, sol uh to solidity okay so the learning curve is really low for newcomers in the rust ecosystem it, it it will be an advantage for you if you already know how to program with rust okay it has a limited libraries and 
you know, compared to Solidity. Okay, Solidity literally has these open Zeppelin guys that could provide you with a lot of juicy stuff that could get you off your feet instantly. Okay, and it's also a little bit challenging to debug compared to Solidity as well. All right, the last one on this list here that I want to you know let you know about is Motoko programming language. Okay, you may not have heard about this because this programming language is just unique to one blockchain ecosystem, which is called the ICP Internet Computer, you know, protocol. So um, this, oh, you should know that the Internet Computer Protocol also has other programming language which you can use to build uh, smart contracts, which they call in their ecosystem canisters. Canisters can you can think about it like in a, a container. You understand? So. Um, ICP also have Rust. They also use this Rust. So you see how cool it is. Rust is very important that you should learn. I see that. If I'm going to recommend for you, if you're going into ICP development, which is like, you know, the the it's so much better than um, Ethereum. What Ethereum provides you to build decentralized applications. Okay, that is what I would tell you because I've used them. I've used their. Um, I've used their ecosystem already. I've used it, you know, multiple times now. So, I, from a blockchain developer perspective, I can tell you that uh, that ICP ecosystem is really great in terms of building decentralized application. Okay. So, what about the strength and the weakness of this uh, Motoko uh, programming language? First of all, it is highly scalable. Of course, and its performance. Second, it is designed uh, specifically for the ICP ecosystem. I don't know if that is an advantage or a disadvantage. It could be an advantage to the ICP ecosystem, but a disadvantage to other people because if you learn something like Rust and Solidity, you will be able to apply that knowledge across different blockchain network. But if you learn this Motoko, it will only be uh, unique to ICP development okay so and it is very easy to learn and easy to know maybe not uh, as much as solidity but trust me it, I've used it and I think I only just learned it was and already know how to code with it so um, the, the problem that it has or its weaknesses are it's limited in adoption so not so many people have adopted it I mean, except you know about the ICP ecosystem, you will not know about the Motoko programming language, you know, and it's still relatively new, you know, it's new, still new, okay? <laughs> it's not as ancient as some programming language such as Rust, I mean, think about the name. Rust is so ancient that it has rusted, that's a joke right there. So it's limited in resources and libraries compared to you know we have the whole solidity crew all right so those are some things that you should know about these programming languages that you should consider learning in 2024 for your blockchain development expertise now i'm going to show you something before i close up and all of that i'm going to show you a piece of code just a greater code across these three programming languages so that you can see how in whether it is simple, you be the judge of that. Whether it is complex, and then you make your own decision from that. All right, let's jump into that, guys. This is how you know a simple greater smart uh, contract in Solidity. This is how it looks in Solidity. Very simple, a variable as a string. You just set your message and get your message. Very simple, straightforward. This is why I like Solidity. It's very simple. Not much. Uh, complication okay now let me introduce you to rust this is how it looks with rust a whole lot of complication in fact this is how you define the contract main function and you just have like something like uh, a, a message which is the variable which you're setting and then something around implementation I'm not very vast in uh, in Rust, so I'm still educating myself, but I think this is how you define or implement the smart contract. And this should be, you know, the constructor function, and this should be 
the uh, function that sets or changes or you know creates the message and this is a function that helps you to get the message you know in uh, Rust so it looks very complicated but I believe once you just understand or familiarize yourself with the concept the variables and all the nitty-gritties and syntax of Rust, it will be a lot easier for you to accomplish. Now let's look at Mo Motoko. So I always change, interchange the name instead of Moko to uh, Motoko. I always ch call it Motoko. No, instead of Motoko, I always call it Moko to. You understand? But it's actually spelled or pronounced Motoko. You know, programming language it ends with dot mo. So it follows something similar to this solidity where you have contract, but in Motoko is actually called con uh, actor. Okay. And this is the name of the uh, smart contract. But in Motoko, is called, or in the ICP ecosystem, it is called um, canisters. Okay, and the idea about canister is that it's more like some kind of a container, you know, those kind of Docker container kind of thing. So that is how you know you should understand the concept of uh, uh, that that ICP is bringing into this. Um, smart contract development all right so this is basically a string a message that we hold text text is a data type and each data type has to be import, imported uh, separately another cool thing about uh motoko and this is a function for greeting for setting or updating the, in, in in motoko it is called an update function and it has some extra key features such as this asynchronous thing which you can use to to wait you understand await functionality especially for guys using javascript it's going to be really cool for you to wait that that this is implemented before it returns a response and this is a function to retrieve stuff from the blockchain It's literally called a query function basically to query or retrieve data from the blockchain all right so this is how the same smart contract looks in different programming language. And yeah, man, in, in Rust, it actually 26 lines of code. In Solidity, 13 lines of code. In Motoko, is 15 lines of code. So what is your take? Please drop your, your uh, perspective on the comment section. What is your take? Which is your favorite programming language? And why do you want to stick with it? And why do you think that it would be better for you to also learn Rust? regardless of how complicated it looks you know and also motoko what is your insight concerning the icp ecosystem all right so i will you know get in back to you on the next tutorial all right so this is part of our series and if you're not um if you're not subscribed to the channel 17 percent of you guys never do subscribe please do hit that like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell because we're going to be releasing some some short tutorials and also long tutorials as time goes so please 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 do not forget that you know i will see you in the next tutorial bye bye